The eruption of Old Faithor in Yellowstone National Park is a sight to behold. It's true that millions of tourists flock to this park every year to see it. Hot water and steam are released into the air to a height of 100 to 180 feet approximately every 90 minutes. Many adjectives come to mind to describe it. Powerful, mesmerizing, unique, otherworldly. Dot. Comfortable? Not too much. But new research by Lisa M. Keller, published in PNAS Nexus earlier this year and to be presented Sunday at the Geological Society of America's GSA Connects 2023 meeting, shows that for some forms of microbial life, Old Faithful Geyser is exactly that. Home. Meet Thermocrines ruber and Thermus aquaticus. Thermocrines ruber was the most abundant bacterium present at Old Faithful, accounting for more than 60% of the microbial population. As a chemo-autotroph, it produces its own energy, not only for its own survival, but also for the benefit of other microbial communities. But how? Old Faithful is a dark and hot place, making photosynthesis impossible. On the other hand, Thermocrines ruber takes CO2 gas that comes out of geysers and converts it into a form of carbon that has the potential to cross-feed heterotrophs in the community, such as Thermus aquaticus. Both bacteria are extremophiles, life forms that thrive in places where most cannot survive. Whatever the challenge of environmental factors, there are microbes that are able to adapt to overcome them. Hypersaline pool? Inspect. Lack of oxygen? You are sure. Scorching hot water? Not a problem. Geysers present a unique challenge. They are highly dynamic environments. As if being thrown hundreds of feet into the air every 90 minutes wasn't annoying enough, the microbes experience fluctuations in steam and water temperatures that continually change throughout the eruption cycle. In every challenge there is always an opportunity, including thermal tourism and volcanic eruptions at Old Faithful. More strains of Thermocrines were found at Old Faithful than at any other non-geysing hot spring in Yellowstone. We suggest that the highly dynamic environment of geysers creates many different ecological niches that Thermocrine can occupy, thereby leading to increased subspecies level diversity, Keller said. These findings not only show that Old Faithful geyser was habitable, but also that its dynamic environment drove genome diversity. To prevent possible sample contamination, Keller collected gaze water that fell from the eruption into a sterile, weighted container. Ten minutes after the eruption ends, he will walk up to the cone with an escort from the National Park Service and take valuable samples. Additionally, he sampled pools fed exclusively by Old Faithful eruptions. Upon returning to the laboratory, Keller incubated the samples at different temperatures representative of geyser and pond conditions. Objective? Monitor microbial activity to verify that the sample bacteria are actually active at those extreme temperatures and they're active, which makes Keller happy. They immediately showed signs of activity, indicating the presence of active microbial life in the waters of Old Faithful, Keller said. Geysers are also of great interest to the planetary community, as active geyser eruptions have been observed on the moons Enceladus and Europa. Everyone is interested in sampling Enceladus plumes, says Keller, 
but before this research was done, we didn't even have samples of terrestrial geyser microbes. I thought, let's take a step back and find out about our own planet first. Sampling geysers on planets may still take a long time, as current methodologies require filtering liters of water, something that would certainly be a challenge if they were far from Earth. But now we know for sure that terrestrial geysers can harbor life, so we are also competing to take samples of geysers on this planet. Founded on the planet geysers are also active, 